What have archaeologists been doing lately? It's a straightforward question with a straightforward answer. They've been doing what they've been doing for centuries, excavating the past to unravel the mysteries of those who came before us. Their recent findings have been remarkable, and the finest among them are on display in this video. A hydrogeophysics training session conducted near Lancaster Castle in England by students from Lancaster University discovered a Romano-Celtic temple in March 2023. Using ground-penetrating radar, resistivity mapping and modeling, studies revealed a walled enclosure with a gateway leading to a processional way. The mapping data also suggests a roadside mausoleum outside the enclosure and what could be the base of an altar close to the temple. The Lancaster Roman Fort, first constructed around the year 80 atop Castle Hill in Lancaster to command a crossing over the River Loon, was rebuilt in stone near here during the early 2nd century. Evidence suggests that it remained active until the end of the Roman occupation of Britain in the early 5th century. The fort's Roman inscription records the rebuilding of a bathhouse and basilica in the middle of the 3rd century. Beyond the castle project's leading archaeologist, Jason Wood, explained that the temple would have served the fort and been dedicated to a god, probably associated with the sea or river. The inner sanctum would have been reserved for the priests, while the outer space would have been for elite members of society. Now we move to Egypt, where in March 2023, archaeologists confirmed they'd discovered a limestone sphinx near the Temple of Hathor in Dendera, south of Cairo. It dates back to the early Roman imperial era. Found inside a Roman-era shrine, the Sphinx has a human face and wears a striped Nemes headdress with an Urias on its forehead, symbolizing royal authority. A Byzantine-era water storage basin made of mud brick was found below the shrine, where the Sphinx and a limestone stele inscribed in hieroglyphics and demotic were discovered. The Sphinx has a warm smile and dimples, and red and yellow paint can still be seen on its face. Experts say the Sphinx's facial features are similar to those of Emperor Claudius, or to give him his full title, Tiberios Claudios Caesaros Sebastos Germanicos Autocrator, who is further referred to on a hieroglyphic inscription as the Son of Ra, Lord of the Crowns, King of Upper and Lower Egypt, Lord of the Two Lands, at the Temple of Isis. The inscription on the stele may help archaeologists verify the possible connection between the Emperor and the Sphinx. Archaeologists from Poland excavating the ruins of Old Dongola in Sudan confirmed in March 2023 that they've made a significant discovery of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics inscribed on sandstone blocks. Old Dongola was the capital of the Nubian kingdom of Makuria, situated in northern Sudan on the eastern bank of the River Nile. The kingdom emerged during the 5th century CE after the collapse of the Nubian kingdom of Kush and was at its peak during the 9th to 11th century. It extended from the area along the Nile from the Third Cataract to parts of northern Kordofan. The recent excavation has revealed over 100 blocks of white sandstone inscribed with ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics dating back to the 25th dynasty of Egypt, also known as the Nubian dynasty. These blocks were originally part of a structure, possibly a temple, built in the first half of the first millennium BCE, which is the earliest example of human activity identified on the site. The discovery is significant because it pushes back the known history of old Dongala by over 1,000 years. As this is an active archeological site, there might be more to come from it. Archaeologists in Egypt have identified the location of one of the battles that occurred during the Great Revolt, a conflict between ancient Egyptians and the Ptolemaic Kingdom from 207 to 184 BCE, which is referenced on the Rosetta Stone. An excavation at Tel Timai in northern Egypt revealed traces of burned buildings, weapons, stones thrown by siege engines, coins, and a broken statue at the site of the ancient city of Thimuis. The discovery was made by Nottingham Trent University senior lecturer and project co-director Jay Silverstein and his team, who began excavating the site in 2009. Jay's team discovered the remains of a young man with his legs sticking out of a kiln, 
and the body of a man in his 50s sitting upright after an apparent fight to the death. They were able to determine the time period of the battle based on when the coins were minted. The site's findings were published in the Journal of Field Archaeology in December 2022. Archaeologists say that the archaeological evidence from the Great Revolt is rare, and this is the first time a specific location where conflict occurred has been identified. A discovery of 17th century Lithuanian coins has been made on the outskirts of Zenyauka, Poland in March 2023. The hoard was found by Mikhail Lotis, who was scanning a field with his metal detector, searching for lost mechanical agricultural parts. When he came across some loose coins and a ceramic jug tightly packed with more coins, Lotis notified the Provincial Office for the Protection of Monuments in Lublin, which he had to do by law, as unlicensed metal detecting is illegal in Poland. Archaeologists were dispatched to the site and found that the hoard was deliberately buried in a layer of subsoil. The hoard contained around 1,000 coins, mostly Lithuanian crowns and shillings, with most of them inside a traditional Polish siwak vase. The jug and contents weigh 6.6 .6 pounds. The coins were minted at a time when Poland and Lithuania were united in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth a joint state with a multi-ethnic population of more than 12 million people. The hoard is now being fully excavated and will then be analyzed at the archaeology department of the Museum of Southern Podlasi in Bialia Podlaska. Here's another discovery from March 2023. Archaeologists in Bjorvika district of Oslo, Norway, have discovered the well-preserved remains of a medieval wharf, which they believe to have been built by a Norwegian king. The wharf was constructed using large logs interlaced into bulwarks, which were then embedded into the seabed. The structures built on top of the foundations pressed them deeper into the clay, where they were preserved even when the surface structures were lost. Over 26 feet of the wharf's foundations survived in good condition under the clay of the Alslafjord seabed. Impressions of barnacles and mussels on the logs suggest that they were left exposed in the water. The discovery has come with unexpected questions regarding the wharf's construction, as there were several layers of dung, food waste, fish bones, and sodden peat inside the bulwark, and it ought not to have been possible to throw scraps of food into what was, theoretically, a closed construction. Researchers plan to dendrochronologically date the timbers to determine who built the wharf. Hakon V, who reigned from 1299 to 1319, is the most likely candidate, since the pier's foundations were found outside the remains of the royal palace he preceded. A cemetery from the Middle Ages has been discovered during excavation at the site of a planned future primary school in Marseille, France. Archaeologists found an unusual cemetery containing three double graves, each containing the remains of an adult woman and a young child. They are thought to have been mothers and children who died and were buried at the same time and were laid to rest with tenderness and care. In one of the graves, a child was even found still holding its mother's hand. The cemetery was in use from the 7th to the 10th century, but the double burials are from the earliest part of the range. The deceased were buried in shrouds and wore modest copper, bronze, and iron jewelry typical of the Merovingian era, dating the burials to the 7th or 8th century. Archaeologists discovered almost 95 burials in the cemetery, many of them children, interred in simple graves, tile burials, or cyst burials. The site was occupied long before the Merovingian era, with evidence of Bronze Age settlement discovered during the excavation, including pits, post holes, and a mud brick wall. A recent study published in the February 2023 edition of the International Journal of Osteoarchaeology has revealed that a middle-aged woman living in Longobard, Italy over 1,300 years ago underwent at least two invasive skull surgeries and survived them both. The woman's skull, found in the Castel Trocino Cemetery near Ascoli Piceno, central Italy, showed signs of a cross-shaped incision, as well as other drill holes made on the skull shortly before the woman's death. Macroscopic, microscopic, and computed tomography analyses were carried out on the skull by an international team of researchers from Sapienza University in Rome. 
the MacDonald Institute for Archaeological Research in Cambridge, and several other institutions. Researchers were also able to track specific changes in the woman's diet and mobility from early life to adulthood through a high-resolution biochemical investigation method applied to one of her preserved teeth. These findings indicate the care and assistance provided to the woman by her community. The specific surgical techniques used involved the scraping of bone from the cranium as part of trepanation, which is the first evidence of this type of medical treatment being performed on an early medieval skull. Next up, we have what may very well be the oldest tavern, restaurant, or drinking establishment in the world. The discovery of this ancient Sumerian tavern in Lagash, Iraq was confirmed in February 2023. Despite being approximately 4,700 years old, it still has food inside it. Back when the tavern was built, Lagash was an independent city-state with its own king. As such, it was one of the first urban centers in the ancient Near East. We can't confirm that this is the world's first tavern, but nor can we rule the idea out. Within its ruins, archaeologists have found 150 serving bowls, benches for diners to sit on, the bones of animals and fish, and even a primitive refrigeration system. There's also evidence that beer was brewed and drunk here, which is consistent with what we know about the Sumerians and their enthusiasm for beer. The evidence comes in the form of a cuneiform tablet, upon which a recipe for brewing beer is etched. Finding the tablet means that it's now possible to brew authentic Sumerian beer. We're sure there are some hipsters out there who'd love to try it. In February 2023, archaeologists in Oswiechem, Poland, uncovered a 300-year-old wooden mikvah, a bath used for the purpose of ritual immersion to achieve ritual purity in Judaism. The excavation was conducted as part of preparations for an underground car park in the city. This discovery is one in a series of artifacts from the Middle Ages that have been found at the site. The mikvah is well preserved, which is unusual for wooden structures as they tend to decompose and break down over time due to fungi and microorganisms such as bacteria. In this case, waterlogged conditions prevented bacteria from thriving by not allowing oxygen to penetrate the wood. The traditional rules regarding the construction of a mikvah are based on those specified in regulations laid down in the Torah and in classical rabbinical literature which describe the requirements for a natural spring or well of naturally occurring water, as well as cisterns filled with rainwater, to supply water for the baths. Jewish people first settled in Oswichem in the 16th century, and the mikveh discovered by the archaeologists dates back to the 17th or 18th century. The find provides historical and architectural insight into the basic elements of Jewish life in Oswichem, this is an especially poignant find, as the site of the discovery isn't far from Auschwitz. Archaeologists in Germering, Germany, made a fantastic discovery in January 2023, a Bronze Age well filled with ritual offerings, which is believed to be over 3,000 years old. The well is incredibly well preserved, with its wooden walls still partly damp from the groundwater. This has ensured that the organic materials discovered within it have been equally well preserved, including a total of 26 bronze garment pins, amber beads, two metal spirals, an animal tooth wrapped in metal to make a pendant, and over 70 ceramic vessels. The condition of the vessels indicates that they were carefully lowered into the water, rather than dropped or thrown. As such, it's thought that they were part of an offering to the gods made during a time of drought when the water table had dropped significantly. The hardships faced by the settlers at the time may have spurred them to sacrifice their most valuable possessions to their gods in the hope that their fortunes might improve. As part of the ongoing archaeological dig at the site, around 13,500 artifact finds have been made, mainly from the Bronze Age and early Middle Ages. It's expected that some of these finds will be made accessible to the public later this year in the Germering City Museum. We finish off in China with a discovery that took place in January 2022. If you've been watching this channel for a while, or even if you just have a keen interest in archaeology, 
you've probably seen battle armor made from almost every material imaginable, from teeth to coconut shells. However, you probably haven't seen armor like this before. It's been labeled fish scale armor, and it's approximately 2,500 years old. The name is a little misleading, as the armor found inside the tomb in Turfan on the edges of the Taklamakan Desert isn't actually made of fish scales. Instead, it's made of more than 5,000 overlapping scales of leather, arranged in a pattern to make them look like fish scales. Experts think that it was imported from the Middle East, and so might represent a rare form of technological exchange between the two territories at that point in history. Armor like this would have been useful because it offers better protection from blunt force attacks than male armor and is also cheaper to make, but it lacks flexibility and coverage. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.